Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with John Ferrier, and we are running SuperCloud 5, which is a cross-continent connection. We got content pumping in from HPE Discover in Barcelona. John and I are here on the ground in Las Vegas, and, and we've got the, the crew in Palo Alto, Savannah and Lisa doing live, live hits. It's unbelievable. I have had many a reInvent where I've spent the week in, whether it was Barcelona or Frankfurt or London at HPE Discover. I'm here with two folks from HPE. Brian Falv Falvey's here, he's Vice President of North America of, of HPE Services Sales, and Joseph George, Cube alum, Global VP of Strategic Alliances, both at HPE. So guys, we're, we're here. We're like here. I said, I've done Barcelona many times during this, this year, but you guys have got a lot going on over there. But why are you here? Yeah, why are we here? It's a, it's a common question actually because we we look a little odd out in the show floor. We're the only you know company like ourselves among our competition that are actually here exhibiting, supporting the show. The reason we're here is because our company strategy is the world you know, the world will be hybrid, and we're delivering the hybrid cloud experience, and so it it makes sense to be at AWS to pick up on that hybrid. So, so if I were yeah. AWS, yeah, right. The cloud, as they say in the fullness of time, everything's going to go in the cloud. We've heard that many, many times. If I'm AWS, I'm changing my mentality of what the cloud is. They've talked a lot this week about we're meeting customers yeah. where they are. So mm -hmm. the definition of cloud is changing, and I would be all over guys like you. Yep. Say, because you got customers, they're loyal, they're not moving their data into the cloud, so you got to move the cloud to the data, and that's what yeah. you guys are doing, right? So, what are the conversations like with customers in that regard? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, um, and you're right. It's not a, it used to be, we talked about this at, uh, a few weeks ago at Supercomputing, the co cloud conversation used to be, I've got stuff in this data center, we're going to move it to another data center, and partnering with our friends at AWS, we're realizing that our customers are telling us that, uh, the journey to cloud is an exploration of applications and data and where they need to reside and how quickly we need to respond with outcomes. So think about an emergency room, all the stuff that's going on there, x-rays and you know, all sorts of analysis around conditions and symptoms, you got to get a response quick. So there's not an hour, five minutes to even send all that data somewhere else. It's got to operate on the edge. There are some things you want to keep in your data center because it's IP, it's sensitive, it's confidential, uh, it's competitive advantage uh, for a lot of our customers, or in a co-location data center, and there's some things absolutely you want to put in the public cloud. So if we have a more robust, intelligent conversation that says, let's look at your applications, let's look at your data, and let's figure out where they need to reside, are they going to be mobile after a year, do, do, we, do things change? Does it need to go from one public cloud, uh, public cloud provider to your data center? Doesn't it go from the edge to your data center? Doesn't it go from the data center to your public cloud? Those are all the organic, life-living, life-giving conversations we're having now with customers. When it comes to the cloud, it's a much more thorough, open, robust conversation. Okay, so I get the, the need for you to partner with AWS. I think about Snowflake for instance, so for years it was kind of one of this, these types of relationships because every year AWS would announce something that was a snowflake ripoff. Yeah. We separate compute from storage, <laughs> they're still doing it. They announced clean rooms, we got clean rooms. And like, okay, yeah, we've heard that years ago from Snowflake, but they partner together and yeah. it makes sense. And now they're happy, they're not even frenemies, they're both making money. And I get it because Snowflake's selling software, uh, AWS is selling infrastructure service, but you guys are infrastructure companies, so explain well, how that relationship. I'll, I'll disagree. Right, it's great, so explain <laughs> how that relation, how you make money yeah. in that relationship. Because we're a cloud company. We're not an infrastructure company. Infrastructure is absolutely at the core and historically what we've done, but our value proposition is cloud. There's this kind of false, false narrative out there, uh, or false decision about, you know, are, should something be in, should you use public cloud, should you use private cloud or on-prem? The answer is all of it, right? It's right. this idea, this uh, notion we have of hybrid by accident uh, versus hybrid by design. And what happened is years ago, everybody was going to the cloud. They all had cloud first strategies, we're going to take this to the cloud. And then they started doing that activity of yeah. moving workloads and data to the cloud and right. figured out 
this is hard, it's expensive, right? There's the management of change that goes with it. Uh, there are certain regulatory reasons, there's myriad reasons why things would need to stay on-prem. And so they ended up you know, building out you know, uh, an on-prem infrastructure component, build out a cloud component, then edge became pr uh, you know, prolific. Uh, and so now your cloud is, is, is everywhere. Right. So it's, it's not, you know, it's no longer, oh, I tried to go to the cloud and some of my apps didn't make it. It's for my future planning, my future growth, supporting my business leaders in my company, I need to have a, a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, I need to be hybrid, and so that's hybrid right. by design. You need to design for it, and what HPE does, uh, especially where you know, a lot of customers have multiple public clouds, what HPE does is consider us the gap fillers, right? You work with HPE, with GreenLake Cloud Platform, you can see all of those clouds, we bridge all of those together, you can bridge your edge, your colos, your own data centers, all those devices, and even create kind of a, a, a true unified uh, right. you know, um, data fabric, right? All of those locations can appear as one pool of data. And this is the new conversation. So that's I'm happened. paying you this for that, 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 that value. Right, yeah. that, that's, that's, so you're shifting the way in which you it's charge for, I mean you're still so selling it's underneath it's the covers, you still have storage and compute and, uh, as and does networking. Everybody. Sure. As does everybody, <laughs> you got to have it. Yeah. Well, but Snowflake is buying it and renting it if you yeah, will. Yeah, but they still have it, right? They it's do so have it, no, you have right? to have it, but, yeah, yeah. But, but they don't make, they, they don't make storage, for instance, yeah. you do. So, but you're also, but you're saying, but see, this, you're this selling a, that value layer on this top. This is a vendor, it's a vendor. What we're talking about is our vendors, us as vendors. When you, when you talk to the customers, they're like, I've got these applications. I've got this data that I need to have secured. I need to have this kind of response time and outcomes. When you have that as your foundation for your discussion, it changes. It says, okay, well some things need to live on the edge, be born on the edge, be operated on, outcome based on the edge, it doesn't go anywhere else. Some things absolutely can be in a public cloud. Some things need to stay in my data center, in my four walls for this reason, security, et cetera. When you start having that conversation, it opens up so many doors for our customers when they're trying to deal, see, see patients, they're manufacturing products for customers, they're trying to do cybersecurity on financial transactions. It's a whole different conversation, and, but this is the conversation we think our customers actually want to have. And I buy that, and yeah. I, I, totally. But, but if I'm, if I'm an, a customer and I'm going to leave my data on-prem or at the edge, I'm going to be wanting to pay you guys because you're better at it. Yeah. Okay. Can AW we quote you? Can we yeah. quote you on that? Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> look at Outposts. I mean, yeah. AWS is selling. They, they well, would love they to. Have they would love to sell Outposts. That was an indication. And, and I, would, I would say this: the, the, this, the, the, the time it took to get to Outposts where it is today. I think was in many ways a failure. And it gave, it gave you guys, a, it was a tap on the shoulder, like hey, here we come. And then it gave you time, I think, to create things like GreenLake. That didn't, you didn't create GreenLake overnight. That was a lot of hard work and effort. Years and years. And, and, it, was a, and it was a lot of like, oh, okay, we're going to do some services tricks over here. And then, but now, everything you do is GreenLake eyes. You got APIs and your partnerships are all plugging into those APIs. So, so so they, they would like to sell outposts, but frankly, you got a better stack on yeah, prem well, and at the edge. I've been, you know, selling GreenLake, you know, for almost 10 years here at HPE, and um, you know, it used to be flex capacity, so it was kind of a consumption model for infrastructure. It has evolved and transformed so far beyond that, and um, really, what it is now is what customers are coming and literally knocking at our door and saying, "This is what I need from you," is the experience. They, everybody's accustomed to and, and values the tools and the orchestration capabilities, the control plane that comes with using public cloud, AWS, Azure, whatever it is, right? And when they turn and they say, okay, I'm going to have, like you were talking about, I need all this data that's going to have to stay on-prem or these workloads and apps that stay on-prem. They're like, okay, I accept that, but geez, I want that continuity of that experience. Right. The way That's I right. derive, the way I interact with and drive value on um, public cloud, I want that in my on-prem, right. my private cloud. I want that from you, HPE. That's the critical differentiator, right. is that software layer, the GreenLake Cloud platform that sits over the infrastructure. So now, you know, for, since the, the, the day this company was started, uh, you know, we, we put an audio oscillator in a box and brought it over to Disney, yeah. right? And we've been putting stuff in boxes and bringing it over to customers yeah. for 75 plus years. Now, you do a, a, a GreenLake, you enter into a GreenLake relationship with HPE, you get a login. 
right? That's your yeah, interaction. Your console. I can log in, I've got a console, I have all the orchestration uh, automation and tools that I need, I've got identity and access management built in, and I'm off to the races, and I'm deriving value right. from that underlying infrastructure at the same speed at which I can drive value from imagine, working with imagine Amazon. Imagine the customer's perspective now, right? Yeah. It was, okay, buy these systems, and run in my data center, or work with the, a public cloud vendor and put stuff up there, I have concerns across the board. But now imagine just a layer where you're taking applications, data, users, et cetera, and putting it into a portal with HP GreenLake, and then determining where these things need to reside at that point in time with the flexibility to manage portability of things over time. Yeah. Right? It really is us as an industry getting back to listening to what customers are actually saying. We talk about all the things we are building as a vendor community. Now it's time for us to stop and listen to what our customers are saying where they say, we have privacy concerns, we have sensitivity concerns, we have security concerns. How do we manage across the whole portfolio? And I think this is what HP GreenLake offers. And we call that abstraction, we call it an abstraction layer, we call it that's super right. cloud. That's I right. mean, that was, was our sort of term to, to, to find that abstraction layer. So again, I get it, and there's a real clear value there. We, we sort of help think through that concept, and, and a lot of customers were saying, we want to pay for that. Okay, so I get that, but then why does, other than the fact that AWS wants to take your customers. Why does AWS want to work with well, you in that regard? Because Explain they, that. you know, look at Outpost. They understand that um, the world is hybrid. I think I, I, you know, I have some some good friends in in the industry who worked at at Amazon for years, and the old mantra was get a customer signed up and pull all of their apps and data and workloads you know, as quickly as possible. I remember into, those guys, they right? were pounded that on the head it. to, 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 yeah. to take, and then they burned out, because it didn't they, work. Well, it doesn't yeah. work, and they, and they all found out, they, you know, they kind of experienced their own end of hybrid by accident, like, oh man, this, this doesn't work, and it became acknowledged that you know, the, their best customer you know, might have 60% of their workloads right, and data in AWS. And so they, that's why they, they responded with Outpost and said we need to have an on-prem option. Meanwhile, uh, Antonio at HP was preaching already for already. years, the world will be hybrid, and today the world is hybrid as right. we all know. Uh, and so we've been building the software assets and acquiring the companies and tools we need to deliver a cloud experience for your on-prem private cloud that rivals and is, has this, this continuity with their customer's experience with public cloud. I mean, it's even down to, I've heard them come in and say, look, I have these young buck developers, when they come in and they're, and they're, uh, they're delivering their value to my company and they're working in public cloud, uh, they understand how to do that. I don't want to have to like give, have this like reverse compatibility when they turn back to the old infrastructure on-prem. I want the same experience. I want them to be able to interact with infrastructure. I think that's where, that's why a, AWS is a partner, a key okay. partner of ours, because they're seeing the same things. I think five years ago was a different story. I think AWS, with Outpost as an example, realizes there's a need that's out there, so this notion is, you know, remember AWS is at, was at HP Discover in Las Vegas yep. just in June. Yeah. The partnership is growing because they see that, that need as well. Now, you guys announced uh, LLMs as a service at, at sure. Discover HP in June. Really you said you're going to ship it this year. Getting, getting close, we got about a month to go, and, and so, but you were the only ones to announce that, so, and, and as part of GreenLake, so that was, yeah. we were a thumbs up on that. Yeah. My question is, when you start to think about, you know, the, 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 the Cube's research did a Gen AI power law, and we basically, the, the premise was you got size of model on the vertical axis, but, but you've got this long tail of industry specificity and domain specificity on the horizontal axis, and mm -hmm. our premise was you're going to see a lot more models, smaller models along there, and a lot of those are going to be on-prem and at the edge. Are you seeing demand for that? Are you actually seeing people deploy that? What, can you give us the update on that? Yeah, I'll start. Oh, fine, yeah, right. So I'll say that the customers are interested in building a lot of their own LLMs. It kind of comes back to IP and data. Mm -hmm. If there's an LLM that a customer generates, um, generally their view is not, it's not something that's made for my competitors to use as well, it's something for us. Plus our applications, our specific scenarios are slightly different. We want something that's very tuned for our company. So there's a lot of demand for that, we're seeing a lot with you know, uh, Gen AI all over the place, right? Um, there's a lot going on, ChatGPT, et cetera. These are all great examples of LLMs that are being developed. So there is an appetite for it. But again, I think that the time that's going by is helping our customer set understand what LLM means to them. Can, they can go and access something that's very public, 
but it could be a wide swath of data, some that's applicable, some that's not applicable to their, their, their sense, or they create their own LLM, and they're able to ping from it, and it's very, very specific to what they're looking Can for. Can you deliver the same level of innovation in LLM optionality that we're seeing in the cloud in your hybrid environments? Are you going to be able to keep pace and do that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, just to, uh, you know, maybe a point of an extra clarification on our, our large language model um, in the cloud, it's really about kind of democratizing access to uh, to AI and making it accessible to customers of all sizes. Because if you if you're you know a huge bank in New York and you want to train a large language model, you have the resources to come out and buy the best right. of high performance computing you know assets and resources. Stand it up in one of your data centers, hire a hundred people to go make it all happen, right? And just you know click your fingers. Yeah. If you're a smaller organization, you need to get your model trained up. You might start with a, you know, a public model, you're going to add your data to it. You need a place to get that training done at speed. Because speed is right. the name of the game in this business. That's right. You don't have time or the money or the resources to spin this huge thing up. What HP GreenLake for Large Language Model does is provides, it's basically, it, it's a, it's a multi-tenant cloud. It's like a public cloud <laughs> environment where you can log in, Put it to use, use the infrastructure, use the tools, use our expertise, develop your model, and then shut it off. You don't have to make the big investment. I think it's pretty noble right. in its approach, again, in democratizing access to AI. That's and right. for our customers to compete, everybody can have a large language model. The differentiator, what makes one company better than another, is how you train love it to that. your we, own data. We love that announcement. Are we going to see GA this year? I believe. Which okay. year? TBD. We're in no, FY24. The reason, the reason, no. oh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's a good one. That's, I, mean, I inferred calendar year. The reason I say that is because we've seen a, a high a correlation between yeah. GA and uptake yeah. in this business. I'm sorry guys, yeah. we've got to go. Last yeah, point. Yeah, I want, I have one last comment on that. One thing that was different than kind of everything you would see on clouds, there's a supercomputer back there, right? This is something that we, we have won on for years. HPE, Cray, SGI, all these capabilities, number one on the, on the top 500 list. There's a supercomputer back there. So when you're in AI running the cloud, you're trying to get to the rightest answer, fastest, supercomputers help you do that. And that's why in the power law, you might see some camel humps along that X axis <laughs> because supercomputers have a lot of data. All right guys, right, thanks sure. so much for coming Thank on. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. All right, keep it right there for more from SuperCloud 5 from Las Vegas, Dave Vellante, John Furrier. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>